So, the folks at Epic Games has just recently announced Twinmotion 2024.1, the preview, and this is built based off Unreal Engine 5.4, which now has a huge support and enhancements to the rendering capabilities that is now available to anyone working with Twinmotion, and this includes Lumen and the Path Tracer for superior visual quality. And for those who like to download this and start playing with it, then you can simply go over to the link in the description that will bring you right here, where you can create an account with Epic Games, download the Epic Launcher, and download a free version of Twinmotion to start exploring. And with that said, let's dive right into it. One of the features that is now available in Twinmotion is spacing and the area tools. What this does is pretty simple. So by default, when you're working in Twinmotion, you get to distribute your vegetations either by placing this one after the other by hand, or you can use the populate button right here and go over to the place section and use the paint tool or the scatter tool. And these were the possible ways of scattering things really quickly inside of Twinmotion. But right now, things have gotten a little bit more interesting. And that is with the introduction of the spacing and the area tool. So with the area tool, how you get to scatter things around your scene now is pretty simple. How we can do that is literally going over to whatever object we like to scatter, a couple of grasses will do, and we can define an area. Of course, you can use the spacing to play with how they get to be positioned within your scene, and you can also go in and change the path or probably update it depending on what you want. Other things that you can do with this includes controlling the path tension. So if you like to tighten this up or probably like to loosen it, you can also do that. There's a couple of parameters that also deals with the scaling offset, the random scaling, and also the rotational offset and random rotation. So with this, you can simply define where you want things to be and be rest assured that they are definitely gonna be there. Speaking of things that will be exactly where you place them is the spacing. So with the spacing tool, you can also define stuff. Say for example, we would like to get a couple of trees just traveling through what we can do is also very simple we can go over to the tree section select the kind of tree we want and we can go in and define a path and you can proceed to just go in and make some changes and with this you can also control a few things probably you like to change the scale the count or the distance you can totally do that so with this we can simply drop that down and we have that number of counts if you want to define this by distance of course you can we're simply going to keep it as count we can throw a little bit of attention right there for the spacing and if we would like to play with the scaling we can also do the same thing so we can also play with the scale offset in this way and to individual objects that you have here we can go over to the asset property and we can choose to play with the age as twin motion offers a tool like this to allow you animate your trees and also allow you control their lifespan. So with this, we now have a very cool set of distribution tools which we can now use to distribute various things within our scene. Currently, there's a couple of limitations with the area and the spacing tool. These do not support animated objects and assets can only be placed in horizontal surfaces. So if you're thinking about spacing things vertically, that is currently not available. If you're thinking about spacing animated characters, I would suggest that you use other tools that currently comes with Twinmotion to achieve that. And here's another beautiful feature that is now available in Twinmotion. It is the render layer. So we already know that Twinmotion offers some very interesting rendering option, but one thing has always been missing and that is render layer. Now, this is available for Twinmotion. So how you can do this is very simple. Say for example, we'd like to have these selected and we want them to exist in a given layer. Just this once, okay? We don't want these other parts. What we can do is we can have them selected, go over to where we have the layer ID, enable that and store them in a given layer. The same thing can be done with this other one. Once you have an object selected, we can always go over to the properties and we can enable that. And I'm gonna store this in layer two. Every other thing can probably come in in layer three, layer four, and you know, for the backdrop as well, we might also wanna do the same thing. So what we can do is we can also enable, go over and store this in layer three. What we can do from here onwards is to export it. So how you can export with your layers is simple. Go over to the export section, click on the plus sign, select any of the ones you want to export. And I'm just going to go all the way out, click on the drop down, select the file format that you want, and then you can specify what layer you want to export. And I can play with the rendering refinements depending on what we want. At the same time, this also exports the mask. And once you're ready, you can simply go ahead and hit the export button and export it. And this is basically what you get when you render. This is with the mask and this is without the mask. Of course, you do have the full images here. And if you go into the mask section, you can see you do have mask that you can use to eliminate certain parts and do some stuff. 
Meanwhile, if you turn off that mask, these things get rendered as individual objects. If you'd like to composite this later on inside of Photoshop or any other tool, then you have all the possibilities to make all that changes yourself. And this is also applicable to video files as well. So in case you're thinking about rendering video files, you can also do that. And here's another interesting update. You can now parent animators. So for those who have no idea, what animators are basically in Twinmotion is this set of tools that deals with rotators and translators. So what you do with them is you can simply add rotator to any object, that object automatically starts rotating, or you can throw in a translator on any object and that object automatically starts translating. And all of these do have interesting presets that you can use as tools to get some things going. And the new update now allows you to combine these things together. So for example, if you do have a helicopter like this and you like the blade to rotate while it's actually ascends, translates, you know, stuff like that, what we can do is simple. Go over to the rotator section, you find this on the library tools, animators, and we can click and drag this and drop. So once we do that, we can actually go ahead and find this and we're going to pick the rotator and position it where you want it to be. And in this case, we're just going to position this rotator right around here. So one of the things I would definitely suggest that you do is make sure you have it exactly at the center of whatever object you want it to rotate to. So for example, since we have this, I would also suggest that, you know, for every object you want to rotate, make sure you test the rotation before you add a rotator. So now that we have that, I can click, drag and drop this right here. And then I can pick this up and plug this under the rotator. And once we do that automatically, you notice that the blade of the heli starts spinning. So let's simply pull back a little bit and then we can go over to the rotator. And from here we can define how we will want this to work. If we like this to have a trigger, then you can simply go ahead and look at that. We've already talked about this on the channel before. It's pretty easy to set up. And if we like this to rotate faster, we can definitely get that going. If we like this to perform a full 360 rotation, we can of course go ahead and set that angle all the way up. And once we have that, we can play with the speed as well. And again, all of these things are things that you do have full access to. And now let's talk about the other part of the animator, which deals with the translator. So with the new version of Twinmotion, you can now combine these things together. So what we can do here is simple. Make sure that we have everything selected and I can click and drag this translator in and we can simply click, drag and drop it. And so once we have that, we can mix these things together and create some sense of motion for this model. So with this, we can set whatever path that we want this to travel through. So maybe we want it to travel upwards, downwards, you know, sideways, front and back. You can do all that. The translator position controls exactly where this heli would be. So if we would like this to have a little bit of an airlift, then we can do that. We can play with the speed, the delay, and we can also play with the distance as well. So you can also choose to mix these things up together and use this to create an interesting looking animation. There's also a couple of tiny updates that are also here. So if you go over to the camera section, when you're editing or making a picture or say a video, you can now set these two film back. So if we simply go all the way down here, you would notice that we have film back and this would give you more of a real world camera looking lens, which you can use for your final shots. Of course, there are some parameters that you can play with in terms of sensor weight and also sensor height. And you've also got a couple of presets that you can also explore all the way down here. You would also notice that we have the bloom and flares. So from the bloom and flares, there's a few updates that deals with the textures, which you can work with as well. And this would be super useful if you do have blooms in your scenes and you like to change the textures of those. Twinmotion now ships with a new sequence media type, which simply allows you to create animation in chronological order. So we can go over here and click on the plus sign and create films like this. So instead of using what we had here previously, we can go over here, click, and we can start defining how we would like things to be. So I can have that, then I can click as well, have another camera movement and probably just have that camera movement right there, update it, and we can use the playhead to move back and forth. So we can also move this over to a position like so, click on that, and we can also update it. And you would notice that once we press the playback button, we do have a very smooth transition across these two. At the same time, you can change what frame rate you like to preview these things as, 
and you can also click on this plus button to add an action camera so just like you have in unreal engine where you can have one scene and cut several cameras in the same thing can also be done here as well so the shortcut for that is just this tiny button and you can get on with it additionally there's also a couple of other interesting updates that deals with ambient occlusion there's a simplified process of creating materials there's also improvement to the fabric material and a new and a new foliage material as well you can also go in and check out some of these things yourself and see what and what you can take out of it and start creating your amazing scene so this is it tell me what you guys think about this one in the comment section and of course if you like this video or you learned something from this you can go ahead and give a like and don't forget to share with a friend and until i see you guys in the next one peace